Hi, everyone. It's Matt Armstrong from The Pen Habit. I'm glad to be back for another episode, and especially this time around, had a little bit of a scare earlier this week. Um, I had set all my equipment up to record several new videos. Uh, I record these in batches because the setup and takedown takes a while to get all the lighting and everything correct, and uh, went to work, came back, planning on recording some videos that evening, <clears throat> Excuse me, and uh, discovered that someone had thrown a brick through the back door of my house, which is about two meters, five feet that way, and uh, had managed to smash through and completely destroy the sliding glass door of my house. Um, fortunately, I have a great dog, a golden retriever, and uh, he has a big boy bark, and he scared off the would-be burglars, and I ended up not losing anything, which is really, really good. So if you hear any sounds of cars driving by, that's because there's a, a piece of plywood where my door used to be, and I'll be, I'll be getting some glass in there soon. But in the meantime, I figured I'd take advantage of the fact that I had everything set up, and once I got all the glass cleaned up, it's time to do some pen reviews. So, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, today's pen is going to be, uh, it's this, this is a fun one. So back in January, there's a company in Washington, D.C., here in the U.S., called Farney's Pens, and they held a contest for a giveaway of a pen, and uh, it was to celebrate National Handwriting Day. Uh, in order to enter, you had to send them a handwritten letter answering one of three questions on the website, and the question I chose to ask was something along the lines of, why do you continue to use fountain pens when we live in an age of instant communication technology? And I wrote this uh, letter that uh, kind of expressed my feelings about it and sent it in and forgot about it. I got an email early in this month in February that said, congratulations, you won. They, draw, they drew the number, the winners at random from all of the entries they got, and I was the winner. Uh, and uh, after I did my little jig around the living room, they, uh, I kept reading the email and said, this is the pen I won. This is a stipula, Etruria Rainbow, limited edition. So the uh, stipula is an Italian maker. This is the first stipula pen I've ever even seen, let alone used. It's not a brand that is easily for sale in this part of the country where I buy most of my pens and not one that I've had a lot of experience with. So uh, I just received it about a week ago. I've been writing with it. Uh, a lot of things I like about it, a couple things I'm not huge fan of, but uh, we'll talk about those. But first, let's just kind of go and do a tour of the pen. So I'm going to switch over here to the close-up cam. Now, one thing I want to point out, this the Etruria is, as far as I can tell from the research I've done online, really considered Stipulus flagship pen. Um, it's, I think, their most expensive pen, or one of their most expensive pens. And uh, I wanted to put this in context, next to a Mont Blanc 149. So you'll notice they are almost the same length. The Mont Blanc's a little narrower toward the end here, but in general, they're about the same sized pen. So you, you have a, a sense of what you're getting into with the Etruria. It's a big pen. Now, I happen to like big pens, so that works out really well for me. Um, so the stipula is made of acrylic. It's a, a clear green, This the rainbow limited edition is a clear green acrylic. They also come in a few other colors, I believe yellow, red, blue, um, orange maybe. I, I don't remember exactly which colors off the top of my head. Uh, but it's, uh, when I saw the pictures of this, I have to admit I didn't love it. It looks kind of cheesy. It's, you know, Skittle colors. It looked a little cheap. Uh, I will say that I don't think this acrylic photographs well because it doesn't, when, once I saw it in person, the acrylic doesn't look cheap. It doesn't look plasticky. I mean, it is plastic, but it doesn't look plasticky and, and cheap. It looks very nice. It's very, very beautifully polished, very beautifully uh, turned or cast or however they do it. I assume it's it's by being turned. Um, and it it feels very, very solid. So it's got a very nice feel to, to the acrylic and to the pen itself. So standard cigar shape uh, does tend to be just a tad bit stubbier than other cigar shaped pens as I showed you with the Mont Blanc. Uh, the cap here is this kind of powdered, powder coated material. It's a golden color, but it's, it looks almost like anodized aluminum 
it feels very uh it's it's very matte kind of gloss not glossy but matte um almost glowing finish it's got a leaf engraving right on the clip here and then a really deep you know feels almost like carving here it's it doesn't feel like your standard engraving because it's pretty deep so it's probably cast that way i would suspect um band in the center and a, a metal band down here all of that same kind of gold material i will say that this gold material looks almost like plastic it's not it's absolutely metal but it looks almost like plastic it's a little weird um the one complaint i have about the clip which is is pretty stiff here is the clip comes to a point um so it, it feels like you could almost stab someone with the tip of that clip and on the interior it's not very smooth and so i've had actually had this clip kind of snag the the bands that hold it in my pen case i use i'll show you here I'll, i use an aston leather pen case um turn it right side up uh for my pens and i've i've actually had the the clip kind of scratch that band um it's it's very rough on the inside of the clip and so i tend to be a little bit more careful when i'm putting it in my shirt pocket uh the barrel of the pen over here says stipula made in italy and then on the bottom side it says 42 of 351 since this is a limited edition so i'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a little bit so we can get prepped for the writing sample uh, or so I can show you some details on the uh, the nib as well. So the section on this pen is very interesting because, as I mentioned, this is a hefty pen. It's pretty wide, but the section narrows down significantly when you uh, when you get to the writing. So if you're someone who likes a little bit heftier of a pen but doesn't like that really really thick grip, um, this pen is actually quite comfortable to write with. It's a little bit narrower, and then the the nib is all gold it's a 14 karat gold it says stipula it's got the leaf motif along the side here then it's got the hallmark that says 585 and 14k 14 karat gold now i i learned something new this week some most of you probably know this but i didn't because i don't really do the jewelry thing um but a lot of european jewelry makers and it, especially the italians tend to put 585 on their a little hallmark that says 585 on their 14 karat gold and that 14 that 585 stands for 58.5 percent gold uh the carat scale one through 24 you know up to 24 carats so if you take an ounce of gold and divide it into 24 pieces um if all 24 pieces of that ounce are gold then it's pure gold it's 24 karat gold if only 14 of the 24 pieces of that ounce of metal are gold, then you've got 14 karat gold. So that's how they determine the karat weight. weight. And five, 585 is actually 58.5% or 14 parts divided by 24 total parts. So that's how you get that number. If you ever see that on something, probably a pretty good indication that it is a solid gold nib. Uh, now, the one thing I will say about this particular stipula is that the, the solid gold nib is not standard on their regular stipula pens. They use other nibs, I believe. I think because this is a limited edition, that's one of the reasons why this has a gold nib. Let's do the stats here quickly. I actually went to the effort of measuring them before I got started, but we're looking here at a length of 144 millimeters. So it's pretty long when it's capped and then uncapped. We've got 130 millimeters and posted is a rather ridiculous 170 millimeters or 73 millimeters, excuse me, 173. So it's very well balanced even when posted, but it's long enough without being posted that it works just fine for my hands. The barrel is 15 millimeters, so it is a, a pretty wide pen. But as I mentioned, this center section here or the, the section itself where you would actually grip the pen is only 10.5 millimeters. So it's it's much narrower than the barrel would indicate. And uh, compare that to the Mont Blanc 149. So if, you used, if you've used a Mont Blanc one before, uh, the section on that pen is about 13 and a half or 13 millimeters right around there. So it's about two and a half to three millimeters narrower at the section, even though the barrel is about the same width. 
Uh, so it makes it more comfortable if you've got narrower fingers or like a slightly narrower grip. And uh, in terms of weight, fully capped, it is 40 grams. And uncapped, you are looking at 26 grams. So it's it's still got just a touch of heft, but it's not too heavy to write with for long periods of time. Okay, one last thing I wanted to talk about is the nib. And the nib on this pen suffers from something that I have experienced with several uh, higher end modern pens. People like smooth writers. They, they just like pens that write smoothly. And I can't blame them because I'm one of those people. Unfortunately, one of the problems with that is that a smooth writer will occasionally be over polished at the factory um, and to a point that it develops what's known as the, the dreaded baby's bottom syndrome. So imagine if this is the nib tip right here and you know my arms are the, the nib. Um, Ideally, the nib tip, and here's the, the nib slit, the end of the nib slit should be as close to the paper as possible when you're writing, because that way the capillary action brings the ink up the nib slit and deposits it on the paper. The problem with over-polishing a nib is the manufacturers will take the nib and then polish it so much that the inner line, inner walls of the tine are brought down like this. And so the end of the nib slit, which is right here, will end here, but the paper's up here. So there's this gap between where the ink comes and where the paper is. And if the ink were flowing, you could get past that. But a lot of times when you first start writing, the ink is not flowing properly. And so you kind of have to press the nib a little bit that spreads the tines, gets the inks flowing, and then the ink will, will once it gets going, you're okay. Um, the problem with that is a lot of times it results in hard starts or skips. And that was the problem I found with this pen from the moment I inked it up. I actually tried a couple different inks because I wanted to make sure it wasn't the ink that was the problem. So uh, the nib is very, very, very smooth, but I think they over smoothed it at the factory. Now, from what I've been able to to determine from my last year of using fountain pens and from my research, this is a fairly common issue, uh, especially on some of those higher end pens where people want to have really, really smooth writing experiences. So um, if I had paid for this pen up front, I, would have, I probably would have sent it back saying, this doesn't write very well. Um, because I didn't pay for it, I didn't feel terribly comfortable doing that. Um, I love the way the pen feels in my hand. I love the way it looks. I love the smoothness. I just wanted to get it writing a little bit better. So here's how I tackled this. Now, I'm gonna before I go into this too much more deeply, I do wanna point out that doing this will violate pretty much every warranty ever invented by pen manufacturers. Do this at your own risk. There are lots of people online who have ruined nibs trying this. Um, so if you don't know what you're doing and you don't feel comfortable giving this a try, don't. Send it to someone, send it back uh, if you're having this baby's bottom problem and you don't feel comfortable fixing it. A lot of times when you see nib smoothing and things like that online, the way they're doing it is they're having you draw figure eights on some abrasive like uh, micro mesh or those um, lapping sheets, those sort of things. The problem with doing figure eights is what you're actually doing is polishing in, in addition to polishing the exterior of the tine, you're also polishing the interior of the tine. So overdoing that figure eight thing can actually cause more baby's bottom. Instead, what you wanna do is knock down enough of this excess material here so you're bringing the nib flat. And you don't wanna do that with a figure eight, generally speaking. So the way I did it, and the way I, I've read about online and tried it, and it worked wonderfully for me, was I took the pen, I got some very fine grit sandpaper, uh, it's 200 or 2,500 grit sandpaper. And I took the pen and very lightly and very slowly, I started at a low angle. I would draw the pen across the sandpaper and roll my wrist up as I did it. And I did that a couple times and I'd test the paper. So what I was doing was just knocking off kind of a band of the ink or of the, uh, the nib tip so I could get rid of that depression in the tip of the nib. After I did that a few times, I'd test it. And if it wrote without many problems, I moved on. I think I only ended up doing that maybe four times or five times on the sandpaper and it worked just fine. Once you do that, then you wanna go back and smooth the nib just a little bit to, to kind of keep it from being this flat, 
you know, kind of angled surface like this, <clears throat> you want to round it out a little bit. And so that's what I ended up doing uh, on this pen. Once I did that, this pen became a beautiful writer. Before that, it was just a little on the, uh, the temperamental side. Actually, it was more than just a little on the temperamental side. I don't think I would have felt comfortable. Uh, I would probably would not have kept this pen had I not adjusted the, the ink flow. Now that I've got the ink flow going, it works great, and I really, really enjoy using this pen. So let's go ahead and do a quick writing sample. Okay, so today's pen. Now, let's see, just to, I had the cap off for so long, it got a little dry there. Now we are looking at the stipula. Etruria, Rainbow, limited edition pen. And this is a 14 carat nib. And the ink is Mont Blanc, Da Vinci, Red Chalk. This is a really, really interesting ink. Uh, I, I like it a lot. I just got uh, a few bottle or a couple bottles of it last week. Actually, they came the same day as the pen came. Uh, and so I, um, it's, it does remind me a lot of those old Da Vinci drawings. It's got this kind of brownish red, terracotta earthy tones to it. It's a beautiful shader. So far, the, the dries fairly quickly, smooth. Uh, I like this ink a lot. It's a limited edition, so it's a little expensive, and uh, it won't be around forever, but it's a, it's a nice ink. It's a nice ink. I like it a lot. Okay. Anyway, let us go back to our drawing here, our writing here. So we will do just a little quote. In honor of Valentine's Day, which is the, uh, this was last night. I actually recorded a version of this last night, but the sound was off, so I had to re-record it. But in honor of Valentine's Day, let's, uh, let's. Do a little love-inspired quote, shall we? Marriage. Marriage is what brings us here today. And of course, that is from the classic film, The Princess Bride. Gotta love it. Um, so, marriage is what brings us here today. This, as I mentioned in my little uh, talk about the nib, is a smooth, smooth nib. Uh, once I knocked that little bit of baby's bottom down, it writes really quite nicely. I have, I've had no problems with it. Um, as a 14 karat gold nib, it does have just a tiny bit of spring, a little tiny bit of line variation. For It's not as, as stiff as, say, like a, a Mont Blanc nib, but it's not going to be as flexible as even like a Conway Stewart nib that has a little bit more give to the nib tip. There is a little bit of line variation. What I do like, though, is a touch of extra pressure really does change the ink flow properties of the nib a lot. So if you've got a, a highly shaded ink, you can really play around with the shading on this because it's so, I mean, uh, I don't know if you can see it particularly well. Let me zoom in just a bit here, but you can see here the shading is just spectacular. This is a, a very nicely shading ink. So that works out very well for us. Um, in terms of wetness, this pen is not the wettest in my collection, which I don't mind. If I'm not putting any pressure on the pen, it's moderately wet. If I decide to put a little bit more pressure on it, then I can get quite a bit more wetness out of it. Um, it is so smooth that I don't feel like I need the extra wetness in order to get that smooth quality. Now, I like a juicy nib, but it's also nice to have some pens in your collection that don't pour on the ink, because if you're in a situation where you need your ink to dry pretty quickly, uh, sometimes a pen that has moderate ink flow is a good thing. Uh, I will say that the, the nib slit on this tapers up toward the top just as it's supposed to, but man, it's tight up at the top. 
So you might need to, um, if you like a juicy pen, you might need to adjust, you know, pull out the wings a little bit to, to adjust the ink flow or, or, you know, floss it open a little bit. I wouldn't uh, do the old trick of, of opening it up that way. You could spring the nib. That's, I've done that too many times to like, to like trying to increase my ink flow in that manner. Uh, upside down writing. We have got, it does write upside down. It's a, I'd like consider this an extra, extra fine line. Um, it doesn't write well upside down, but it is possible. So if you need a super fine line, it then it's pretty scratchy. Uh, but other than that, man, this, this pen, once I got the baby's bottom problem fixed, I like this pen. Um, I like it a lot. I actually, in terms of the fit in the hand, I love my Mont Blanc 149. It's a great pen. But if I had to pick one of the two which feels more comfortable to write with, the stipula wins every single time. Um, it's it's the I think it's a combination of the fact that the barrel's just, barrel's just a touch wider, but the section is actually quite a bit narrower. Uh, the one that's my one complaint about the section on the Mont Blanc is it's so wide that you know I feel like I'm writing with a tree trunk. There's also a little lip on the Mont Blanc. I'll see if I can can show you what I mean. A little lip on the edge of the Mont Blanc right here that I don't like at all. Um, and I don't get that on my, uh, on my Etruria. It's a very smooth, uh, kind of curve, curvo, curvilinear, um, job on the section of the pen. So before I wrap up, I just wanted to say a big thank you to Farney's pens. Uh, consider this free advertising for them. They, uh, they didn't pay me to, to say anything good about them and I haven't ordered from them yet. I will be, uh, now that, uh, cause I wasn't actually even all that familiar with them. So I am now, and I want to thank them for doing such a great giveaway. This is a beautiful pen. I'm thrilled with it. And, uh, I'm very glad to have been able to win it. So that will do it for the review of the Stipula Etruria limited edition rainbow in green, 14 karat nib. If you have any questions, please leave them below and yada, 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 social media stuff. Check the description for links to all of that. And there will be more pen videos coming as well. Also, if you haven't been over to penhabit.com, let me once again remind you to go over to penhabit.com. The reason for that is we are running, I'm starting to do some giveaways. So uh, at the time of recording, I've got a giveaway going on where I am giving away ink samples, uh, where I let you pick five, five, milliliter, five milliliter ink samples from any ink in my collection. Uh, I also have a giveaway planned for in a few weeks and it's going to be a big one. It's, it's a nice giveaway. So, uh, if you haven't, if you haven't, uh, headed over to the pen habit, go do that. Cause there's going to be more giveaways or follow us on the social medias and, uh, we'll be good to go. So thank you very much for watching. I appreciate you coming back again and we'll see you here next time on the pen habit. Bye.